Hey gang, I've got a pretty interesting little parlor guitar here that's in for repair. It's probably from 1900 or thereabouts. There's no maker's mark inside. There's no information on when it was built. It's really nice. The back and sides are made of uh, quarter sawn white oak. Gives you that characteristic medullary ray pattern on there. Really pretty. It's got this nice multi line wide purfling. quite faded now but originally would have been quite colorful with green and red stripes and the reason it's in is it's got a lifting bridge there's an open seam down the center of the soundboard there's also a crack here that runs from the bridge up to the rosette that I'm going to put some glue in I'm making the cleats out of some soundboard material this is spruce First thing I do is score it on both sides with a marking gauge. That gives me a good clean line to cut to with my back saw. This picture is actually deceptive. I run the cleats so that the points are in line with the crack and the grain crosses it about 45 degrees. The old bridge came off extremely easily. The old hide glue was very desiccated and there wasn't much of it holding in place. This puzzled me for a second, like I couldn't get the bridge to come up, and I was wondering why. And it turns out it was actually hanging by a thread, which was a very, very old guitar string, which had gotten stuck in one of the little slots there. Here's a shot on the interior. This is the bridge pad, which is actually a brace, which runs from uh, one side of the top all the way to the other. It's made of a very soft material, and you can see that the string ends have cut almost all the way through it. So I think the best thing to do is to make a bridge patch overlay out of maple. It'll be thin, just in this area here. Uh, that'll re-establish a nice flat surface for the ball ends of the strings. And the other thing it'll do is it'll pull those uh, strings backwards a little bit from the saddle. So all that tension isn't going to be focused right at the front edge here. It'll be dissipated over the entire footprint of the bridge, which is kind of why you have a, a bridge patch in the first place. Here's a shot of the overlay. It's about two millimeters thick and that gets clamped on the inside. The bolts act as a, a locating uh, device that just uh, runs through the outside string holes and keeps it in the right position while I get the clamps on it. There was a little missing fragment of rosewood on one corner of the bridge, so I made up a replacement graft. And I'm using super glue to hold that in position. That fits in nice and tightly. And I get to act as a human clamp for a couple of minutes while the glue dries. Then I'll trim it back using a chisel and a block plane and a carving chisel to get the pyramid shape. For the soundboard I decided to fill those little slots and uh, I've got some spruce here to do that. Kind of a messy job. I'm scraping off the old glue residue and some remnants of shellac. They hadn't actually cleaned off the entire footprint of the bridge when they glued it on, which might have been a contributing factor to why it started to come up in the first place. Here's a little cork padded clamping call that has a hole drilled in it to accept the point of the pyramid and transfer the clamping pressure to the outsides of the bridge. Here I'm cleaning up the glue squeeze out using a damped Q-tip. This is hide glue and it cleans up nice and easily. I'm using some shellac to do some touch up around the exterior of the bridge here. That also seals off the glue line and prevents the hide glue from absorbing moisture from the atmosphere over time. It's time to drill the string holes, so I'm going to hold this block of wood up against the underside of the bridge pad. In a lot of factory situations, this doesn't get done, and when the drill bit goes through the other side, it tends to break things out and you have a lot of loose fibers everywhere. It's quite a mess. So uh, this just makes sure that there's no blowout. So we've got those new pegs reamed in. The old ones, the ones that came with the guitar, the three that remained are larger. They're sort of a non-standard taper. Difficult to find, I think. 
and obviously they don't fit that well because uh, they all had tape on them. So I just put on a standard set of modern ebony um, bridge pins. They look pretty nice. There's some unevenness in terms of the height um, because some of the holes are larger than others and they sink in deeper. I didn't want to ream them all out um, because they would get, you know, extremely loose at that point. So it's kind of, you know, you get what you get. For strings, I'm using Diderio Silk and Steel, the light gauge, which is 11 to 47. You would never ever want to put a standard set of steel strings on a guitar like this, you know. This is a guitar from the age of gut, and gut has a significantly less tension than a modern steel string. Um, the um, Silk and Steel does pretty well. I would still suggest detuning it, though, you know, maybe take it down a full step to D when you're not playing it just to, you know, give it a chance to breathe. In terms of the uh, action, it's fine at the first position and graduates to abysmally bad by the time you reach the uh, the body joint, the, the 12th fret there. You know, it's like a hard classical action. Um, there's not much we can do with uh, that in terms of the bridge because it's already very low to begin with. There's no saddle. It's got a fret instead of a, a saddle that we can remove. And to be honest, the amount of material we would have to take off is basically equal to the height of the bridge as it is right now. So to improve things we'd be looking at a neck reset. That's a can of worms on a guitar like this. It's not a Martin. It's not a Gibson. Um, we don't know what that dovetail, if there is a dovetail, uh, what it looks like under there. You know, some of them are really, really skinny. Some of them are very wide. You know, it's, it's a difficult question. Um, you know, I'd suggest the player, if he's just going to play you know, first position chords, that kind of thing, you know, just let it be what it is. And appreciate it for its aesthetic qualities. It's a really beautiful guitar. You know, and it sounds pretty nice too. I'll try to do a little demonstration on it, um, and then uh, we'll see you again soon. That's it for today. Mm -hmm.